how close to the edge can I get? What can I get away with? These are questions we ask all the time. Maybe not out loud, but certainly in our hearts. Think about relationships. We know what God says about how to honour him, but we wonder how intimate we can actually get with someone. How far can I go? Or take driving a car. You might not be a driver yet, but I'm sure you've seen someone else driving. We wonder how fast we can go above the limit without getting caught. If the speed limit is 50, we think we can do 55, okay, but what about 56, 57, 58? How close to the edge can I get? What can I get away with? The trouble is, this attitude shows that deep down we don't really trust God's goodness. And we don't want to do or obey what God has said. Maybe we think it would be way more fun to ignore him altogether than to obey him. But that doesn't sound like a real disciple, does it? That's not obedience, that's disobedience. How do you feel about all the laws and commands that God says we should obey? If you're anything like me, then I'm sure there's times when you want to chuck out a lot of them. I remember someone once saying that they would love it if the Ten Commandments could be the Seven Commandments, or even just the Ten Suggestions. But that's exactly how some of the people in Jesus' day had started to live. And others were hoping Jesus himself was going to downgrade God's laws and commands, or maybe even get rid of them altogether. Now Jesus is here, and all about forgiving people, they would think to themselves, do we really need to bother obeying God's commands? But then we hit verses 17 to 20. Jesus is coaching his followers on how to live as his disciples. And man, Jesus' standards are high. Jesus wants to get rid of the question, how close to the edge can I get? And how far can I go? Instead, he wants to point out the better way of obeying God's rules. Now, immediately we, we hear the word rules and obedience and we start to get defensive. We don't really like it. But here's the thing. Our way of thinking about obedience and Jesus' way are completely different. In our world, here's how obeying rules normally works. Someone comes up with a rule or a law. Anything you do that is close to the law is fine, but as soon as you break it, there's consequences. It's a bit like a fence by a cliff edge. You can walk any way you like, as long as it's not right by the cliff edge. But as soon as you climb over the fence, you've broken the rule. Everything up to that point is absolutely fine. Stand by the fence, peer over the fence, even lean on the fence to get a good look over the edge. But as soon as you hop over that fence, that's it. The deed is done. Only death awaits. That's the way most rules in the world work. And that's fine for human laws. However, God's law isn't so much concerned about what we do with our hands than what we do with our hearts. In this bit of the Bible, Jesus gives us six incredibly relevant examples of what it looks like to live his way as we obey God's rules. We're going to focus on the first two. Verse 21. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder. Well, that's okay. We, we all know we're not allowed to murder anyone. We know that anyone who crosses the line of murder is wrong. But what about everything else that leads up to that line? That stuff isn't murder, so we're all okay, right? But is that right? We all agree that you're not allowed to murder anyone, but is it true that as long as you don't actually end their life, it doesn't matter what you do to them? It's okay to, to hurt them, to mistreat them, or, or embarrass them, or shout at them, or treat them like an idiot? This is the way the people in Jesus' time had understood God's rule about murder. Murder is wrong. Don't do it. But calling someone a name, that's fine because it's not murder. And yet Jesus challenges them in verse 22. He says, but I tell you. You see, Jesus shows us a radically different way to obey God's rules. He says, because murder is wrong, you don't want to do anything that might even lead to it. If climbing over the fence of murder is wrong, then don't even get on the pathway that leads up to it. 
In fact, Jesus says that you'll be judged just the same if you get angry with someone as if you had murdered them. Why? Because anger is on the same pathway that leads to murder. To make his point really clear, Jesus says that anyone who calls someone else a fool is in danger of going to hell. That might sound extreme, but calling someone a fool, that's making them feel like nothing and humiliating them, is on the same pathway that leads to murder. The chances are that none of us have murdered anyone. But have we gotten unfairly angry at someone? Have we physically or emotionally hurt others and done it on purpose? Has the same sin that prompts one person to do hurtful things to another person caused us to think hurtful things instead? But Jesus goes one step further. God's rule about murder isn't just meant to stop you doing bad stuff. It's meant to inspire you to do good. The rule about not murdering should encourage us to fix any broken relationships we might have with other people. Right now, is there someone you've fallen out with? Is is there someone you don't really like? Maybe you think of them as a bit of an idiot or just wish they weren't around. If so, are you in danger of starting to go down the same pathway in your heart that Jesus says is as bad as murder? You might never think about actually killing them, but, but in your heart, the same sinfulness that leads to murder is making us feel that way about them. Do you see how radical God wants our obedience to be? If someone's annoyed you, of course don't murder them. But Jesus says don't even get angry with them. Don't treat them like an idiot. Don't, don't even call them stupid names. Instead, run away from the edge. And actually get as far away from the pathway as you can. Instead, go and fix that relationship. Forgive them in your heart and do whatever it takes so that the two of you can be brought back together again. And why should we do that? Because that's exactly the way God treats us. God's own son came to die for you so that you can be brought back into a close and personal relationship with him. All who trust in Jesus have been completely and freely forgiven even though we deserve God's anger because of our sin against him. But what about the second rule Jesus addresses? We we asked the question at the start, didn't we? How far can I go in my relationships with other people? And Jesus gives us a very clear answer that speaks into this area of sex and relationships. Now, you might not be used to talking this openly about sex and relationships, especially with your church or small group. But this is a big area of life that Jesus thinks is important to talk about, and so we should too. Verse 27, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. That's the fence to keep us from falling over the cliff. Adultery is is treating someone who isn't your husband or your wife as if they were your husband or your wife. Adultery breaks a marriage commitment which is why it's wrong, and God says, don't do it. Now, most people would be quite happy to say that adultery is a bad thing. It generally causes unhappiness, breaks apart families, and and just leaves bitter feelings. So we know that anything that makes us cross the fence of adultery is wrong, but so often we think that everything up to the fence isn't so bad. But is that right? Is it okay that as long as you don't actually have sex with someone you're not married to, It doesn't matter what you do with them. That's what the people in Jesus' day were thinking about this rule. It's the same old question, how far can I go? But what does Jesus do with this rule? Verse 28, but I tell you. Jesus shows us this whole new way of obeying. If having sex with someone you're not married to is wrong, then anything that takes you down the pathway to the cliff edge is also wrong. There are some things that are really clear. For example, if you're not married, having sex of any form, touching each other sexually, getting naked together, talking dirty, it's all wrong because you're not married to them. Or what about online porn? It's such an easy thing to access. It's free, it's quick, it's easy, and it's completely secret. But why is looking at porn wrong? Well, in that moment, you're lusting after someone you're not married to. And according to Jesus, it's on the same pathway as adultery. 
But when you think about it, this affects things like TV programs with nudity or sex scenes. Sex is something to be between a man and a woman in a marriage relationship, not to be watched by thousands of people on TV. Or what about fantasizing about a relationship with someone? You might wish that you were in a relationship with a person who is already in a relationship with someone else. Perhaps they're even already married. There's nothing wrong with wanting a good relationship with someone, but Jesus makes it clear that who we want a relationship with and why we want that relationship matters. I know this might seem extreme and, and most people will say the complete opposite to Jesus, but Jesus says sex in marriage between a man and a woman is an incredible gift. Don't cheapen it. Make it special. Enjoy singleness, but in a way that saves yourself for marriage. That's the best way. And Jesus doesn't stop there. He cares so much that you don't even get on the pathway, let alone get near the cliff edge, that he says, do anything it takes so that you don't go anywhere near it. That's what Jesus is talking about in verses 29 to 30. He doesn't mean we should literally cut off parts of our body because it causes us to sin. If we did that, there would soon be nothing left of us. But he does say, do anything it takes to deal with the temptation that is dragging you down the pathway. If looking at something or someone starts you off on the pathway, if certain websites are the trigger of temptation for you, if there are books or TV shows that start you creeping up towards the edge of sin, if you're in an unhelpful relationship with someone right now, then take drastic action to get rid of whatever it is that's causing you to sin. But ultimately ask yourself this, am I just seeing how close to the edge I can get? Am I trying to see how far I can go? Or am I trusting that God is good, that he loves me, and therefore striving to live the way he says is best? You see, when you think about it, what is the one part of the body that causes you to sin? Later on in Matthew chapter 15, Jesus makes it clear that it's ultimately the human heart, our very nature, that causes us to sin. If you want to cut out sin in your life, you need a new heart, a new nature. And that's what Jesus gives us through his death on the cross. Jesus took all of our sin upon himself and gives us instead a new heart, a new nature that is declared clean in God's sight. Now, no matter where we find ourselves on the pathway of sin, even if we've crossed over the fence itself, we can repent of sin literally turn around and start heading away from sin and towards God. So stop asking, how close to the edge can I get? Or how far can I go? And start living the life that Jesus himself has given you. The life that leads away from sin and closer to him. Thank you for downloading and watching this video. My name's Alan and I'm the director and producer of Video Bible Talks. Video Bible Talks is a free video resource and we've done it this way so that faithful Bible teaching can be made available to any church and any group in any context, no matter what. Our vision for Video Bible Talks is to produce Bible teaching videos that cover the major genres of the Bible. So from Old Testament narrative through to the major prophets and minor prophets to the Gospels and New Testament letters. So if you would love to see faithful Bible teaching made available for free uh, in the future, then do join us in supporting and giving to this work. This first series was only made possible through the generous support of people such as yourself. So if you'd like to join in, head over to videobibletalks.com and click the support us link from the main menu. And thank you for watching.